going to ask Ken Gill to come up. I won't even explain. I'll just let him share. Can we just sit down together? Is that okay? For those that have not been here before, this atmosphere may be uncomfortable for you. We preach the message out of Isaiah many times that he wants to enlarge our borders. And he wants to stretch us out to the left and to the right and the north and the south. But when he starts stretching us out, we don't like to bear stretch marks of what the Spirit of God is wanting to take us to. For those that have not been here before, this is an intercessory worship gathering, prophetically led. When Mark in, uh, came to me four, five, four, about five years ago and said, would you join with me in seeing something happen in the province? I said, absolutely. Let's go. Let's go. Let's do something together in the province. And um, so I've been, this is my province. I've been here 35 years now. Planted churches, started ministries, lots of things. Covered my province from the south, the southwest, the southeast, the north. Covered ministry, retreats, gatherings, doing my best to see something of Alberta's heritage be restored. It's my understanding that our province at one time had between 30 and 40 Bible colleges. It was called the Bible Belt for a reason, where Christ was center. And it seems to me that he wants to restore much of that. That almost like every thriving local church would become a center of the training up of young apprentices, male and female, that we begin to give birth to fivefold ministry gifts as natural, as natural. That we'd once again begin to minister on being called, called out of something, called to something, called to represent something other than ourselves. And in this gathering, Many times, I'm a charismatic contemplative that confuses many people because I can fast and pray and meditate and go into solitude with no problem. But I love to dance and celebrate and preach and shout and all the rest of that. Because it's, it's a contemplative life that anchors us to the purposes of God. And then it's the charisma of God that releases us to release the joy, the dance, the celebration and become very comfortable in that kind of a space and say, God, I'm willing to go with you into the depths of intercession, but I'm also, I want to soar with you, with the angelic hosts of God and with the, with the eagles. I want to, anybody here want to soar with the eagles? We, we all want to do that, but many of us don't know how to get there. We're maybe afraid. As Steve was sharing with us this morning, I could hardly believe what he was saying because I was alone in a sanctuary by myself on a Saturday night and worshiping the Lord. And he said, son, would you dance for me? 700 seat auditorium, nobody in the room. And guess what the first thing I did? I turned around to see if somebody was watching. Think about it. Think about the fear of releasing expression. To think about the fears that he wants to set us free from. So I, I was so self-conscious. I kept looking for somebody in an empty auditorium. Like, think about that. Think about the paralysis of analysis of the things that we do. So when he said, Steve, would you dance for me? Yeah, I'm in that room dancing and nobody's watching but him. And he creates atmospheres for us to move out of bondage into freedom. 
one of my assignments is to go across the nation and set the sons and daughters free. Set us free. Many of us don't know we're incarcerated, but he wants to set us free. And he says, I want to set you free. I want to liberate us from the things that would hold us down. Now, I can't dance like I used to. I'm getting older like the rest of you at the same rate of speed. But as, as a father, when I read Zephaniah 3.17 that he dances over me, I thought, that's a picture I'd like to see. Where he's dancing over creation. He says, is this message on the dance? No, 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 this isn't. This is a reflection from the beginning of Alberta Linked when we launched in Spruce Grove. The beautiful things that have happened. This is our 12th gathering. This is our anniversary weekend. This is our fourth anniversary weekend. Isn't that beautiful? And I, I, I'll say for myself, I can't say for you, but I'm not stopping. I'm ready to go to every community in our province. We've been to the Grand Prairies and they can tell you about what God did in that time in COVID. They can tell you. You can go to the Drayton Valleys and the expression of what God did came out of the Grand Ferry expression where he began to sing for five minutes a prophetic song over Drayton Valley. So we converged in Drayton Valley to see God do something in that oil city and break out into that place. Isn't that what we all want to see? We went down to Lethbridge. We were at Dick and Joan. We came back up to Calgary with Craig and Southside Victory. And we've been out to Bonneville and into Westlock and to various places. And God said, go to Medicine Hat. So we came to Medicine Hat. The Lord said, come again strike the ground again so we're here to strike the ground we've come here by faith we paid good money right to come here is that not true we've yielded 36 to 48 to 72 hours of our time to come and the holy spirit said i want you to reflect on what i've done for what i've done in the reflection is i have more for your future do we have that kind of faith to move into our future by faith. I believe that God wants to raise up so many men in this room and turn our hearts towards intercession. I am so grateful for the females and the women that cry aloud in the presence of God for all of these things. But if we're gonna have apostolic prophetic gatherings, we wanna look to maybe all of our hero apostle, and that's Paul. And he said, I travail, I travail. He didn't shy away from intercession and birthing until Christ is formed in us. Do you know how long it takes for something to form on the inside of us? It's not a day, it's not a week. It's a lifetime of the Spirit of God forming and forging His, His person into our DNA and driving out us and replacing us with Him. <laughs> he wants to do that. I remember my call to intercession. I thought I was doing God a favor. I'm an intercessor. And he said, son, your call to intercession has nothing with you doing me a favor. He says, I've called you there to keep you from flying apart. There's an integration grading part in intercession that keeps the man and woman of God together keeps us from failure, keeps us from doctrinal weirdness because he's the chief intercessor lives on the inside and he wants to groan through us. With words that cannot be uttered, are you comfortable with that? That travail is going to produce the sons and daughters of God that we've been calling home this morning. It's going to produce it. And the misnomer about intercession is that it's female. It's not the very travail of the soul that came through the prophets of old and the, and the apostles of the New Testament, the travail of the Spirit of God, that Christ might be formed in us and that we pray in the Spirit and the unutterable gushings of the Spirit begin to 
flow from men, not just women. Seriously, my father said to me one day, son, if your eyes leak, your head will not swell. And let me tell you, we got swollen heads and we got very small hearts. And God wants to reduce the size of our intellect to the place that we know him by our spirit and by our heart. And we release that in the name of Jesus. He just wants to release himself. And it's not sissy. There is a call. I don't know if you've ever heard any teaching on intercessory discipleship, but that's where I take my sons. I say, come with me to the place of prayer. And get underneath my right arm and come with me into intercession. The seasoned and the apprentice. How do we bring a generation into intercession, but that the fathers and mothers do not take us to the place of prayer and encourage the intercession of God. He ever lives to make intercession for us. He's seated on the throne of his power and he's making intercession. Do you ever, do you ever feel special? Like, I'm being prayed for by the chief intercessor of the universe. Like, come on now. Come somebody get happy that he is interceding for every one of us. The least we can do is become an intercessor for him. The least we can do. Is that not true? I was in a church. They asked me to do an 80th anniversary service. Now, one thing you don't want to ask me to do is anniversary services because I'm not anointed to do that. and I should have never done it. You know what I mean? I'm not called to do anniversaries. I've got too much prophetic stuff on the inside of me. I got too much apostolic direction that I, it's pretty hard for me to just to stay in there and just speak blessing and happy anniversary. I can do that, but you understand what I'm saying. And so I'm, believe it or not, I'm teaching the adult Bible class before I'm doing the Sunday morning service, okay? Get a picture of that. We don't have that in many places, do we now anymore? But. So I was doing that. I said, Pastor said, I'd do it. I'll do it for you. It's an 80-year-old church. And so I was doing that. In the middle of it, he says to me, son, cut this short. Come and visit me. So I cut it short. I went into the basement, an old Sunday school classroom. And he said, I want you to speak on the spirit of betrayal this morning. I said, oh, Jesus. On an anniversary Sunday. And I, I said, God, please. See, some of the places he wants to call us into are very uncomfortable. We have to be led by the Spirit, and there has to be some kind of result at the end. Is that not true? So he took me on a, a biblical journey on betrayal. Joseph, three J's, Judas, and Jesus. How's that for a homiletics class right there? Three J's, that'll go. Three points, that'll preach, right? But I had no preparation just like this morning here, no preparation but the heart, being prepared by the Spirit. I went up and began to speak on the spirit of betrayal, and then I began to speak to people in the church that the spirit of betrayal was in their life and you needed to repent right now. Stepped into that holy anointing where the fear of God literally takes you and propels you to begin to call things that are not as though they are. And Anyways, I won't tell you the whole thing. In the last assignment, when I bowed to pray, he said, listen carefully. Go to every man in this congregation and hug them until they break. Till they break. I said, please, Jesus, this is an anniversary Sunday. Well, he says, I'm trying to give the church a future. Will you just follow me? My wisdom, his wisdom, I had an exchange right there. So I bowed my head, worship team. I said, you just come up and worship. And then I walked. I said, every man in this congregation, I didn't tell them. I had the assignment from God on the inside. And I said, every man in the congregation, will you stand? And then I just started on a journey for about 30 minutes. Until every man that came under my arms, I put my arm around them was hit by the Spirit of God like a spaghetti noodle hitting water. And they slithered all out onto the floor in brokenness, in repentance, in contrition, and in humility. None of them knew. They probably still don't know till today because I don't talk about these things. But methinks that in this place, 
there is a fresh call. Ladies, please don't be offended. I'm fully for you. I'm fully with you. We just need you to come into travail this morning that we men might get free. And we'll carry our province differently than we've carried our province. And we'll carry our cities differently because we are interceding for the places that God has placed us. Seriously, I invite every spiritual leader in this place from whatever community you're in, that when you get home this week, that you go home and you leave your city from every portal. You go east, north, west, south, and come back into your city and ask God to give you fresh eyes for your community because we've become so familiar with our cities and our towns and our places. We need to go out on purpose and come in on purpose. Be led by, say, God, wash my eyes. Let me hear different. Let me think different. Let me see different. Let all those things begin to happen. And I believe that he will do those things for us. Is there anybody there? Are there any men in this place today that you'd like to receive the invitation to a place of intercession? Remember, intercession is more than prayer. It's more than prayer. It's the beginning of the activation of our lives to literally penetrate and infiltrate culture strategically as led by the Spirit of God. Intercessory prayer is one of the six basic forms of prayer. But then there's the intercessory life. Why is he calling me into intercession? It's for a people group. It's for a nation. It's for a city. It's for a family. There's a purpose beyond our intercession. And I believe today that we have a purpose, and that's Alberta being linked. And that God would lift us up and he'd move us by his spirit into a place of intercession where we've never gone. You say, Just, do I have to cry? I'm not. We're not trying to manipulate anything. We're not good at that. But the spirit of God wants to draw men in this room into that place. And allow the Holy Spirit to hug you until we become like spaghetti noodles in his presence and we fall prostrate before him and we begin to weep and we begin to cry out and God's youth, there's times I've had to say God, I, I can't take it anymore please, I've told my wife I think I'm going to blow up this burden that I'm carrying I don't know what to do with it I have to he just begins to groan through you, I was preaching in Ajax a month ago, my wife is a testimony this morning I stood for 40 minutes and preached with my eyes shut because in worship, I was so groaning so deeply in the spirit, groaning in the presence of the glory of the Lord. Then I had to preach and I thought, oh, do I have to leave this place to just preach? And I just stood there in front of the people and I, with my eyes, I never looked beyond the people. It was a holy moment. It was a time that the spirit of God and the eyes of the spirit were working with the people, not the eyes of a leader. But it's the eyes of the Spirit that was penetrating the hearts of the people of God. And I believe this morning in this place, the chief intercessor is here because we've welcomed him, number one. And number two, we brought him with us. And he wants to work with us today to raise the level of intercession in our province. And he invites men today in the name of Jesus to come from where you're at, to come to a place by invitation, not from a mere man, but from the spirit of the living God that would call us into that place to humble ourselves under his holy hand and come into that place of intercession where we would stand before him and we would worship him and surrender our minds, our spirits, our emotions, our entire being to him. Is anybody interested the invitations there and I come to you today as an intercessor and I've stood in the gap for nations and cities and people groups and the poor and the widow and the orphan you stand in the group okay, you stand in the gap for all these things and then he begins to birth through us that's where the birthing comes man birth he comes as we intercede he gives us his plan he takes an apostolic anointing and impregnates the womb of a ripe local church and they begin to give birth 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 because that's who we are 
We impregnate the people of God with faith and hope and vision because it's part of that apostolic grace and anointing, that prophetic apostolic call that moves us from where we are to where He wants to take us. So, Father, the womb of the Spirit in this room is ripe for you to impregnate us. I invite you, Spirit of the living God, that overshadowed Mary, would you come and overshadow? Would you lay upon us? Would you impregnate us with faith and hope and assurance inside of our spirit, man? In the name of the Lord Jesus, come. Visit us in the name of Jesus. Men, if you're interested, and women, stand to your feet, lift your hands to the Father and say, I submit and subject myself to the chief intercessor and I accept the invitation of the Spirit. I accept the invitation of the Spirit to come. I want God to take me into places I've not gone before. Just come. Just come and just lift your hands to the Father. Find a place on the floor. And you're not too old for this. This is where he invites us to new dimensions, fresh dimensions of his spirit. Just lay out before the Lord and give him your body. Give him your mind. Give him your spirit. And other intercessors, just come and lay your hands upon them. In the name of Jesus. Just come, man, come, don't be shy. We come. Now, ladies, will you stretch forth your hands? Will you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost so that these men will come forward in new dimensions of the Spirit of the living God? 